promise hope alive. Yes, there is hope and a new Nigeria is certainly possible. And a good morning, afternoon and evening depending on our time zone. Today we've, uh, we are actually having a very uh, good day because our own P2B Excellency is going to talk to all Nigerians uh, in X platform and that is one of the reasons we are coming um, at this very hour to let all obedience know and other well-meaning Nigerians that the platform we have been talking about in the past days where you are going to interact and ask the questions that are relevant to uh, these uh, um, Nigerian issues and all the issues regarding the Labour Party uh, uh, threats to Labour Party and all of that is finally here. We'll be going live and we'll be joining the Parallel Fast X platform uh, on this and uh, we'll be coming with that. Then we also have the issues um, uh, of Labour Party defectees. The people we, the obedient actually put into their respective positions by, by standing in the sun, the rain and defying all odds. In any good state, majority of the obedience there. But finally, they have left Labour Party defected to uh, the PDP. Well, we'll be bringing that across also. And then we have the issue of the Board of Trustees and what are uh, the Labour Party uh, chairman uh, saying about the INEC um, not covering the convention that they have. We're also having news coming out from the Oklahoma as uh, that very community, um, all the people in the community have come out to state clearly that they do not have even portable water, they don't have food, the vehicles don't go in, don't go out, and they are stranded, starving, hunger in Oklahoma. That is the, uh, in Bayelsa State where the, um, the soldiers were actually uh, that had casualties uh, the last time. So we'll be having a lot of discussion on this and I'm not the only one to have this discussion. I have Divine in the studio. Boom, welcome and thank you for joining us on today's episode. Well, speaking of the um, live that's going to be going on on Twitter, um, we've had so many people wanting to talk to His Excellency Peter B. Um, this is your chance to interact with him and, you know, bring up contemporary issues, ask questions, you know, concerning the whole drama going on in the Labour Party. It is going to be happening on X, which is formerly known as Twitter, by 7 p.m. So get yourself ready and actually come with your questions. His Excellency Peter B would actually be in the position to answer you. And if you're not able to join on X, we got you covered. You can join us on YouTube because we will be live streaming. Yes, His Excellency Peter B has reached out to the Parallel Facts team and uh, we are informed uh, that we are now permitted to uh, join the Parallel Facts direct streaming of that very program. Um, thanks to the team at the uh, Parallel Facts and uh, Emir Saddam, uh, we thank you for giving us that privilege. So wherever you are, uh, if you are unable to join on X, please endeavor uh, to join uh, the obedient family team so that you can contribute. Make sure you write down all the questions you want to ask that you've been asking the obedient family TV. We have been trying to uh, stay away from your questions for days now. Ask why is PO you know, on that convention? Why? Well, PO is going to be live and you are expected to fire those questions. Just be ready and make sure you are on that X platform. If not, get your question ready from the obedient family TV as we'll be taking it across uh, to that very side we'll be actually being on the x platform and also being on the on the on our own show so that we can now take the questions across to PU and all of that. We want an all-inclusive discussion and interaction that PU says is on contemporary issues that bedeviling the nation, meaning it goes way, way beyond the Labour Party issues. But talking about the Labour Party uh, divide, let's get that one even started because a lot of discussions on why uh, Labour Party convention, PO was not there, um, Alex Oti was not there, Tony Moy was not there, a whole lot of uh, other people. And we are now telling our people, you know what, make sure you write down your questions so that it won't be coming to you. Because I recall yesterday you had a lot of questions that came to you on the platform that you were like, am I Peter Obi to answer all these questions? Well, very true, to be honest, because, I mean, the fact that he wasn't there raised a lot of concerns among the obedience. People were really wanting to say, you know what, is he actually deflecting from the um, Labour Party? Is he going to do this? Is he going to do that? Well, 
very valid questions, very salient points raised. But that is why you have the opportunity to actually attend this live and actually come and hear from His Excellency Peter B's mouth, right? And so we know that that's what has been um, going on in Labour Party. Well, um, um, Kenneth Okonkwo recently granted an interview to um, Arise TV where he was actually talking about the situation going on in um, Labour Party. He raised um, various points and he actually, you know, said a lot that we're going to, you know, listen to and then come back to the studio to have this conversation. Yeah, but before we get into uh, uh, Kenneth Okonkwo's this thing, I want to clearly say that uh, uh, Kenneth Okonkwo Okonkwo is actually trying to um, talk on the issue of the convention and why INEC refused to be part of that very convention and the constitutional issues. In as much as uh, Kenneth Okonkwo um, is raising those issues, we seriously don't want to join issues at this very time with the Labour Party, their NLC and all the other things. But let's take a listen to him. Uh, maybe one of us can actually deduct and uh, adduce from what he has to say concerning that convention as he says that that convention is actually a social media convention, <laughs> if I'm not correct. Let's take a listen to Kenneth Okonkwo. It has come to this because Legally speaking and constitutionally speaking, there's no national working committee in its entirety. And I'm talking about the constitution. The constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, section 223, it made it clear that the constitution of every party must have in it provisions and rules that must enable the election of its members on democratic basis. And it made it clear that the democratic basis means they will not exceed four years. Right. Two to three. One A. Two A. And if you exceed four years, what it means, strictly speaking, is that there is vacancy mm. completely and it's constitutional and again you can't sit down and go to social media and conduct a convention and you call it a national convention no that's a social media convention well even beyond that INEC yes. has dissociated itself but from INEC that should. convention and yeah. what they did is quite legal right. and constitutional section 82 Subsection 1 of the Electoral Act mm. made it clear before you do any convention, you must give INEC 21 days notice. And 82.5 made it clear that any convention done without such notice is invalid. INEC is not your football. You can't wake up two days and you tell them you're giving them notice for an, a convention that will be happening in your backyard and you want them to come. I mean, are they just us? This is a constitutional body and it's a creature of the law. I've always talked about rule of law. I am going to side anywhere law is siding. And you know, it is pathetic and it hurts me when I read Article 8 three of the Labour Party constitution that said the objective is to create a new Nigerian mm. personality that is patriotic, altruistic, transparent, and committed to due process and rule mm. of law in all spheres of our national life. And then somebody wants to be the national chairman and you cannot be transparent in a little thing as in convention. Fine. Uh, Kenneth Okonkwo has a way with uh, words. And uh, having a way with words is uh, he knows how to blend the same social media um, convention, so to speak. But right. that is coming uh, from um, Kenneth Okonkwo. But in reality, we noticed that Labour Party did give INEC notice prior to even uh, 2024. Because in 2023, either December, they wrote this very letter. Yes, it's actually showing on the 4th. It was received on the 4th of December 2023 and it was addressed to the chairman of independent national electoral commission uh this same letter is of last year and is above 
three months. They were telling them that we're going to have this very convention uh, that is going to happen uh, on the 29th uh, um, right. of March. That is when they said that this is going. So um, let me differ a little from what uh, Kenneth Okonkwo has said. And of course, I agree with him to an extent. But yes, there were changes on, their, uh, on the dates of this, but already a notification has been sent to them. So they should be prepared to go and conduct if uh, it is what is required on the Constitution or Electoral Act. Because if it's 29th and you are told, oh, it's happening in Edo, then from Edo, they moved it to Umwaya. Oh, it's not happening at Umwaya, and you are informed it's going to happen at uh, Anambra. Of course, I think it's uh, transportation because any logistics that INEC would have had, they would have had now. That does not mean I'm joining issues with them, but I'm just tr clearly trying to say that at some point, we need to understand there are forces behind the issues that are happening with INEC because, as you know, I hate INEC with passion. Udia mm -hmm. presently constituted, I hate them with passion. Well, um, it is a very valid hate, to be very honest, because we understand the role they played in the last general elections, and so we still have a lot of vendetta against them. So, of course, this is not to applaud them per se, but um, I think what um, Kenneth Okonkwo was just saying was just to say, you know what, there are constitutions or there are rules, and these are rules that should be followed. If you're going to have a national convention, the um, constitution says at least 21 days' notice, and then if they gave them two days' notice, you know, they, I understand them saying, you know what, or they are reluctant to actually accept the national convention but like you rightly said i understand that there are external factors that plays a role in the whole um, bruhaha and so so that's going on in the um, labor party currently and that's why i think his excellency peter b is a bit reluctant to actually um you know speak on it because he understands that there are people who are in high places and understanding the momentum that the labor party gathered during the last election it is very necessary for them and their political ambition for them to you know crumble the leadership structure of the labor party but at the same time this is not to exonerate the Labour Party because they are playing right into their hands in my own opinion. I just think that if you know that people are actually coming for you or trying to destabilize you, it is necessary that you go back to the drawing board, whatever grievances from various factions are actually, you guys talk about it and then arrive at, you know, a favorable conclusion so that you don't allow the enemy, you know, keep playing you because we know that it is necessary. These people want the Labour Party to crumble, but at the same time, why are you playing it right into their hand? Why are you making it very easy for them? So I think um, everybody has, there's a blame for, you know, both the external um, factors and also a blame for the Labour Party chieftains. I just think there's some greed going on because they are making it easy for them to play right into the hands of the I people. I think who this is actually to, a reminder because uh, what you just said now is, is making a whole lot of sense because uh, the Labour Party seems to be playing into the hands of the, their detractors. Right. Because now we have uh, 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 members, the camping, who are actually supposed to support the party at this very and time. That's the the, point. Uh, yes, the camping to PDP in Enugu State. And of course, before you know it, they will be citing uh, the issues of uh, party uh, issues and all of that to all the camp. But for those people who are the camping in Enugu State, why is uh, Alex Oti not the camping? If there's a, why are the senators not the camping? You get my point. Right. Right. They have an interior motive, and that's why I say that we obedient should be careful when we select people that we must uh, campaign for and people we must vote for. You understand? Because it is the obedient that made those people got that very seat. They wouldn't have smelt it in PDP. Right. PDP will never have taken them right. at all. But after we have slugged it out in the rain and in the sun, now they are moving to PDP. Well, and they think they can get the party back? No. But there is something else where I know your mother do me, me, but hold on because Vers don't even begin the uh, old me. That is one of the things that uh, Kenneth Okonkwo said about 2027 that is actually exciting right. in this very conversation that we just watched. Right. Kenneth Okonkwo says something that is very interesting. And what he said, other than that, 2027 is all about P2B, it's not about Labour Party. That I'm going to take from Kenneth Okonkwo, and that is what every obedience is relying on. That's why we are going to build the cooperative society, the structure from the grassroots, and work on it. Let's take a listen to Kenneth Okonkwo. Merger, and that's something that's being discussed very, very seriously. Yeah, sure. 
Um, what would it, in those circumstances, I mean, the Labour Party would be limping into such a merger no. and could potentially bring its the, the, the chaos yes. within the party <laughs> into such a merger. And that makes it look very unattractive politically. You know, 2023 is about P2B, not about Labour Party. Anybody who is bringing P2B on the table... You mean 2027 that's coming up? Or in any political right. permutation, is bringing the new Nigeria, the new thought force, is bringing absolute victory into whatever is done. Right. So you are talking about a political party. We are talking about, when you come to election, you talk about candidates. P2B electrified Labour Party. P2B has no business to lose sleep about whatever is happening in any political party. How many months did he join the Labour Party? And he made what he made. People are loyal to his person. The new Nigeria is loyal to his person. And presumably, yes. that the, he'll take the obedience with him wherever he goes. That's a hypothetical question. But I'm telling you that the obedient, obi is the obi in the obedient. So it's only natural that the obedience that was founded based on Obi mm. was certainly follow him to wherever he's doing. Wouldn't you follow a man that has never had a scandal? If you're searching for a new Nigeria that is bedeviled by people being killed, women degraded, depraved, economy sinking every day coming from uh, Kenny to Kunkwo. I mean, he has to go to the extent of uh, training, uh, telling Charles and I go that uh, that uh, OB that is unobedient is actually the OB itself. Right. Um, you know, he's the OB in the obedience. And to be honest, I think he couldn't have put it um, better because like I usually say, I think it is about the ideology of the person that we um, believe in and not really about the party. So if Labour Party, like, they should not get their house in order, we're going to leave them and actually move to um, a party that is ready to provide us a platform so we get a new Nigeria. So I don't think it's really about a party crisis or whatever. We're loyal to his ideology. And as long as he happens or retains that integrity and transparency, and accountability that we know him as. Any party could do whatever they want. I don't think Labour Party made p 2 bs and so that's what it is. All right. I think enough of Labour Party. We'll be doing that later by 7 p.m. Do join us. Uh, make sure that uh, your tabs are on and all your questions uh, are ready by 7 p.m. as uh, His Excellency p 2 will be joining uh, the Parallel Fact uh, X platform and will be restreaming from the Obedient Family TV. Get your questions you want to uh, correct so that you don't come back to us on questions that we might not be able to answer you. Now, away from Labour Party and all this, let's get to Delta State and the issues around Bielsa State. As uh, the Nigerian army the military has uh, declared wanted eight persons from okwama community and these very persons from that very area are actually saying they are innocent as one person from there who is actually a monarch in that community who is declared uh, as um as a wanted well, as you know, many people have questioned uh, the constitutionality of the armies declaring people wanted as uh, the previously a court, a federal high court, has said that army has no uh, legal right to um, declare persons wanted. Rather, is the, is the, is what happens to the police. But anyway, that doesn't matter as much as they are all... Uh, um, agencies of government that are to protect um, uh, civilians. But let's start with this very discussion from the people who are actually saying they are dying of hunger in these communities, that the military has refused to let any food come into that community and they are unable to reach out water or anything. They are just dying. Can we just let's take a listen to them. We'll come back to this discussion wanted alongside seven orders by the military authorities in connection with the killing of 17 Nigerian army personnel in Okwama community. The monarch arrived at the state police command headquarters 
at exactly 6.51 p.m. to report himself to the police commissioner, Lufemi Abaniwanda. Before going to the police command headquarters, the king, who spoke to journalists in his car, explained that he is innocent. Well, based on the, the uh, news that came out this morning to say I'm wanted, I'm on my way to the police to declare my innocence to the police. I know nothing about this heinous crime. Uh, I'm the traditional ruler, yes, I'm the traditional ruler of a Burubu kingdom. However, I know nothing about it and uh, I'm going to the police to turn myself in. The military authorities on Thursday released pictures of eight persons wanted in connection with the killing of his personnel in Okuama Delta State. I'm really, really very surprised and taken aback that my name as a monarch of the kingdom will appear in a list of wanted persons. I have no hands in killings. I have no hands in encouraging anybody to kill anybody. It is against my philosophy as a human being and my faith as a Catholic. It is against it. It is a, this is a, a serious crime against humanity. And I think it, it, they need to look at the appropriate places. They need to do a, 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 a thorough investigation to know all those who have committed this and bring them to book. And bring them, let, let justice prevail. man did the right thing uh, divine because uh, he you know on himself surrendered himself as a monarch but surrendered himself uh, to the police to show that he's actually innocent he's not going into hiding oh that's actually very right of him to do to be very honest because in my own opinion i just think um the nigerian military actually in a haste to actually make it look like maybe they were doing something to actually bring the people who killed the slain soldiers to book they just released you know a group of people who they just just i don't think it, the least actually reflects the true nature of the people that actually committed the crimes to be honest i think they just put those names out just to the, um you know change the facts that or make it look like they are working because i see no reason or rather no motivation but at the same time it's just an opinion and if they truly believe that these people are actually um they actually have a hand in the killing of these um soldiers then they should go ahead and investigate because i don't actually buy the idea of just naming people as suspects without actual reason or anything to prove that the fact that okay you know these people actually call people to this crime so um he did a very good thing to actually come out and say you know what i have no reason to hide or run away because I mean, God he forbid. said he's even surprised that <laughs> right. his uh, name appeared on that list. He's, he's only seen it even on the TV and all of that. Right. I was about to say, God forbid I got arrested for something I did not do. I was going to actually come outside to say, you know what, I did not do this thing. Because by the time you start running, they're going to make it look like maybe you're actually guilty. So it actually makes sense for him to um, hand himself over to police and say, you know what, I have no hand in this. And I actually applaud him. Yeah, I think he did the right thing. And again, uh, talking about what happened in Bayelsa, right. now that there is no food coming to the community that were raided and uh, yeah. they said it's more of a ghost time, they, they even prevent the boat that brings them uh, food to that community. I think that has to stop. Let's take a listen to what they had to say in that village. Igbomotoro won in two communities are separated by the river Sangana, now devoid of hostel and bustle of the rural life it is known for due to the military operation in search of the killers of 17 officers and soldiers at Okwama community, Ugele South local government area of Delta State. In Egbomotoro 1, there are voices of lamentation about hunger and starvation over a halted agrarian lifestyle for economic sustenance. We are short of food. We have been besieged, no going out, no coming in. Then the soldier man that shot the gun was shouting on us, no market, no fishing, no farming, no school. That was what we hear from a distance. They did not allow anybody to move, to go to our fishing ports, our fishing, and even to go to our farms to get crops to eat. We are under starvation. They mention a young boy which is called Amagbe. That is what they mention. They don't want us to even move out. There's no good breathing. We cannot even sleep. Pursue us into the bush. All the leaders run away. 
the only person talking here as a spokesman is the only chief remaining in the community. The people who are dead are not yet found out all because some of them fall into the water, some of them was in the bush. The list of people are not yet made, but I know it is more than around 50 or 50, more than 50. While the military are still stationed there, restricting the supply of foods and other amenities, the natives are pleading with the Bayelsa state government to come to their aid with food supplies. We want a governor to come to our aid to rescue us, send foods so that at least it can sustain us. Let the investigation go on, but let our liberty be given to us. You know, go see any man for here. The only person we go see, see woman. And food, you know, get because all the people where they get stuff, they don't look their stuff wrong. Local boat where they go, you know, they bring food stuff for us, then ban the boat to come, come into the community. So they're not going come. So even me, I'm talking yesterday. Since morning, my brother, I'll not tell you lie. One cup of gari, never enter my belly. We did for hungry. The situation of the people at this very location really is very, very pathetic. I think the state government or the state governor should be allowed to visit this community to see how you could be able to assist the people over there. Because hunger is not uh, somebody's friend. Well, um, I think there is more to this story than they are letting on, to be very honest. Because, I mean, the soldiers already lost their lives and this is not something to trivialize and they've been buried. But we just know that it is not actually very smart of them to actually raise down communities or still keep, um, you know, occupying these communities. They will and see stop food from coming, coming to the community. Right. So it is just a very precarious situation because we have women and children and even men being hungry. And what sense does that make? Because the da damage has already been done. You've released them a group of of eight people that you said are responsible for this killing. So what has the common man that lives in that community? Why are you still actually making life very unbearable for him? Well, um, you know, these points were raised not just by me, but also by elder statesman Dele Faratimi, where he was speaking about the sad situation of these communities that were occupied. What, um, you know, losing the lives of soldiers were already bad enough, but we don't have to actually retaliate by, you know, killing other people because it is not some kind of, you know, do me, I do you situation because this are lives of people. We heard from the man um, in the video saying it was over, you know, 50 people that were actually killed. He raised different points, um, you know, about the people who are actually at the helm of affairs, but we all know that by their antecedents, these people should be rotten in jail. He actually said a lot, but I think we should just, you know, pay a listen to what he said, and then we'll come back and have a discussion. They are living the lives of kings and princes, but the people themselves are deliberately impoverished. So it is not out of place to compare Nigeria to that place that was described as consuming its inhabitants, because Nigeria is cannibalistic in the extreme. In recent days, you've heard the story of Okwama, where the soldiers were murdered by a few, and where the soldiers went back with reprisal attacks and leveled almost an entire community, killing indiscriminately. Lekito Gates and the massacre that took place there in October 2020 is another good example of what we have become as a people. Earlier in the year, we were talking about Bokos in Plateau State, where people were killed on Christmas Day like flies. Nigeria is the only place where you find the government talking about repentant terrorists and absorbing them into the army. Nigeria is the only place that will be as rich as it is and you see people desperately scooping hot food off boiling cauldrons, packing rice with sand. This is the country where the rulers were hiding palliatives meant for people during COVID. Everything about Nigeria is suggestive of the country that the spies entered, where it consumes, it devours, those are the words, it devours, it's a land that devours its inhabitants. It is instructive that it is this same country that could not find five billion for the student loan scheme, that they are busy buying a hundred and sixty million naira jeep. They are praying billions into private accounts. You have people who should be in jail, rotting in prison cells, presiding over the affairs of the country. And you think that it is not sustained that we describe such a country as a place that devours its inhabitants. 
The Nigerian is busy crossing the Mediterranean Sea after surviving the Sahara and the slave markets of Libya. Where, what are they fleeing from? Because it's no, that's not migration. That's fleeing. They are fleeing what has become a functional war zone. How did we get to this point? In my youth, you could go to England without collecting visa. They'll stamp your visa at the gate. Is at the is right there at immigration control that they give you the stamp your visa to enter. This is the same country today where you require millions to buy ticket and you need to queue. You see our people queuing in the rain and in the sun to get visas to go out. Sefas has Sefas, West African Sefas, the Togolese currency has more weight than our Naira today. How did we get here? So it is, and if you remember, this analogy that you are raising from this anecdote, this is an anecdote that goes back over 10 years. It wasn't this bad then, and it's going to get much worse. So mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that we are where we are, but this is where we are. And there is nothing about where we are that is suggestive of any immediate turn around anytime soon. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I am merely speaking to what I see. There is nothing about our country to encourage or, or offer any worthy aspiration. The referral to me is always uh, on point when he discusses Nigeria and the obedience and what is happening in Nigeria. He saw a whole lot. We can listen and, uh, and follow him on his page and all of that because uh, he's always very sound on the discussions when it concerns uh, Nigerians. So we'll come back with a few of the things that he said, but before we go, let me quickly again bring to our attention uh, all obedience who have joined our WhatsApp uh, community platform. Uh, we have one of our own uh, obedient family member who had uh, pledged uh, the sum of 250,000 naira yesterday to support registration of obedient family cooperative society uh, uh, in Nigeria as we register through the all the 700 and something like local governments. That is the foundation that we are setting up to make sure that we are rooted from the grassroots. And that's why we want all obedience at their respective local government join us to register this. Let it be official in your local government, Obedient Family Cooperative Society. If uh, you don't have uh, the funds to financially do that, join us on the platform and we'll see to that effect, as we can see that all the other people, both in a Edo State, Delta State, they are already doing the needful as they are making those registrations. We must start from somewhere, and we have already started. And this is the foundation that we are talking about, the foundation of the obedient family moving forward. Recall, whatever you want the obedient family to support you with, we can do that when you have formed a cooperative. But how do you start with that? Join us. There's a link at this very broadcast. On the description of this video, there is a link. Use that link and join the Obedient Family Cooperative Society. Go to your local government secretariat or the State Ministry of Commerce uh, to inquire about the registration at your local government. Get back to us on that very uh, community platform on WhatsApp and then we can uh, support you. Uh, if you don't have the funds to get that registered, our members are ready. All the obedience who are there are ready to assist. As a matter of fact, one of us also uh, volunteered for a do state saying that a do all local governments that he will fund the registrations for the obedient family cooperative society. So it means all our people in Edo State does not even have the need to bother themselves. It's just for you to go to your local government or go to your Ministry of Commerce and make your registration per local government. Get back to us and it will be funded. 
that is the way it is. And of course, Edo State might be a, a case study as they are going into election and they will understand that uh, the, uh, the governorship candidate of the Labour Party has been endorsed by His Excellency P2B. Some of those questions will be asked to him, of course, I know this evening and he is to take, uh, he will be answering all of those things. So please, wherever you go to and join us on this very cooperative as we are starting it, don't be left out. If you are a support group member, put your group. It's just a minimum of 10 people to actually set up the, uh, uh, the cooperative society in respective local governments. Do join the community now. Take charge of your local government as we'll be supporting you through this means. That is where the support will be coming from going forward. So we need to get that started. That, that is the process registrations first. Thank you once again for being on. For some of you who wish to join uh, the one that we already started here, here one of the um, fish production plants that we set up that have started, has commenced production of, um, of fingerlings of fish that we wish to distribute across uh, the whole fish farmers across Nigeria, not just in Anambra State, Delta State, Edo State, and, but across Nigeria. We have commenced the production of um, fishes. This very facility deals mostly getting melting out the eggs and then getting the eggs to also get the, um, the other things that go with egg, which is incubating the egg and the sperm and uh, finally push two of them together to produce uh, 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 what we call a fry and from fry they move to fingerlings from fingerlings they move to a full-blown fish a table fish that will get us into the production area that uh, his excellency has spoke about so if you wish to join on this venture this is a business that is already running uh, you can reach out to me on the Obedient Family Cooperative Society or you could use this very um, uh, platform also to reach out to me so that you can get you uh, across to the people who are financing this very production facility so that you can go into uh, the same uh, partnership position with them because they need we need uh, to produce uh, not just thousands but millions of fishes that can go into exports if we produce we move them out you know put them in different plots across the whole place and then harvest at the end of the day so if you're interested in this please reach out to me so that uh, we can get you fixed up with the with the production plants that will be all for now until the evening when we come back again bye for now times that i'm thankful for the opportunity to perhaps explain it so that the idiots who have continued to assume that I have broken my word will be clear. I said if he won the presidency, I'll leave Nigeria on exile. So let me clear that up. For him to have won, the people would have had to have voted for him. He didn't vote for him. He stole the presidency. Yakubu and Einek sold him the presidency. The presidency is not an expression of the people's will. It is an expression of the debauchery of INEC and the height of our judicial corruption. He did not win the presidency. If I had left, I would have been sanitizing and deodorizing a skunk. If nothing else, I rise and fall by my word. And when I said that I will live on exile if this man won, it was so that people will know that I do not believe Nigerians to be depraved enough to be possessed of the idiocy to vote somebody like him into power. And they did not. Anybody who prefers to delude themselves can continue to delude themselves. But Inubu knows, INEC knows, the judiciary knows, and so do a lot of Nigerians. That Inubu did not win the presidency. He stole it. So I'm not leaving because he did not win. It's that simple. That I'm still here is in rebuke of him. It actually cost me a lot more to stay here. It's not multiple level of danger that I face on a daily basis by remaining in Nigeria. 
Because if they will be planning my mother three years ago when they were not in power, one of his goons in Lagos State was the one sat at the head of the plot to kill me. They are the ones in power now. Ordinarily, I should run now. But I'm here. I am here because he did not win. He knows it. And every man and his dog in Lagos State knows it. He was beaten resoundingly in Lagos on the 25th of February. He couldn't even make 15% in Lagos. Chef Magbaje, the IMEC commissioner in Lagos State, cannot produce the form EC8A for Lagos State up till today. I was the person who was charged by the OB legal team to collect the election material from IMEC. He could not put up until today. IMEC in Lagos State cannot give us the form EC8A, which is the polling unit level result. Because they know he lost. He lost woefully. He was thoroughly rejected across the length and breadth of the state that he has held hostage for 24 years as at that time he lost to how much more the other parts of nigeria let them continue fooling themselves he has snatched it grabbed it but he can't run with it and that's why we are all in the mess that we are in today mm. so yeah if he had won if nigerians had been foolish enough to have voted for him i would have left it wouldn't be because of him it would be out of protest that I could be stuck with such evil people who would have found the grace to vote for somebody like him. But as I have said, they did not vote for him. They rejected him. He has forced himself on us. And we can't do much about that. But I'm not going to legitimize his stealing by leaving. He didn't win.